Hi everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I've shared with you a lot of my favorite websites and so I wanted to pick up on that and let's do version 4 of this. If you haven't seen my favorite websites in the past, then I actually have a playlist that includes all of the previous sites that I've gone over. Some of them are fun, some of them help you with productivity or help you be more efficient as a teacher. So let's get in and start exploring. Now the first website is actually a website about websites. It's Wix.com and you've probably heard of Wix or other services like it such as Squarespace. Wix is a really easy and free way that you can create some kind of online space. It can be a blog, it can be a website. You can sign up for a free account which is what I've done. Of course there are paid upgrades that you can subscribe to but you can also have your students create free Wix websites and then you can have them do schoolwork with the website as a portfolio for example or or have them create a project using Wix. It doesn't have to be a public thing if your students are worried about privacy. You can click on edit site and you get a really easy and simple interface that you can work with. You can work with blocks, you can drag and drop elements if you want to change the place and the position on the page. You can add content such as decorative elements or galleries. You can embed content from other places. You can upload images, you can write blog posts. There are a lot of options, but what I think is good to think about is how can you incorporate this into your class? Can you get students to collaborate together on a Wix page? And maybe that could be their portfolio that they submit at the end of the semester. Or instead of doing a typical presentation in front of the class with a PowerPoint slide deck, perhaps the deliverable could be a Wix page. What I like also is that I can embed this Wix page into Canvas. And so here's a Canvas page and I embedded the Wix code just using a very simple iframe and I set the width to 1200 pixels and the height to 650 pixels and I put that website right there in the Canvas course. And so you could create your own Wix page and then you can share it with your students. And it creates very dynamic and interactive content. Now think also about the applications of using Wix in a discussion. So maybe the deliverable, instead of the students having to read a journal article, write responses to some prompts, and then visit other student posts and interact that way. Maybe you have them as individuals or as groups create some Wix content and then they can embed it right into Canvas, right into the discussion thread. And so their initial discussion would be primarily centered around this portfolio that they design. And again, all of this content is just boilerplate as examples of the types of interactive content that you can have on a Wix page, but they can formulate it and they can put their own effects and their own content in there. So let's move on to the next tool that I want to share with you, this online resource. I'll tell you that as a professor, I have never used this resource, but I have been tempted. But it's just really fun. If you have family or friends and you just want to play a joke with them, I think one time I actually used this website with my kids, with one of my kids who is asking a question that this kid can go online and search without me having to intervene. And maybe I don't know the answer, but it's an answer that's easily found on the internet. And that's where this website comes in handy. It's LMGTFY, which is let me Google that for you. And so if they ask you a question that is Googleable, then you can go ahead and go to this website, lmgtfy.app, and suppose they're asking, what time is it in Hawaii? And I don't know what time it's in Hawaii, but I could search it up. But instead, I'm going to type that in to this website, and I'm going to go ahead and get the link to that. And so then what it does is it shows them how to do the Google search themselves. So if I go ahead and paste that in, it says, OK, step one, visit lmgtfy.com and start typing in, what time is it in Hawaii? All right, so I've got that, and then it instructs me, go ahead and click web search, <laughs> and then the website pulls up a bunch of Google sources that, yeah, you can search Google and you can get this information. So again, I'll come clean and say I've never used this for students, but there have been times when I have been tempted <laughs> to go onto that website and send it to the student, but no, I usually just create a quick screencast video and explain it to them. Patience is definitely a virtue, right? Okay, the next website I want to share with you is visme.co, or you can just call it visme. Visme is kind of like Canva, not Canvas with an S, but Canva, and that you can use it to create interactive graphic elements. And I feel like Canva, PictoChart, they have their places. Visme, I think, is unique, and you really have to get your feel for them. If you like Infogram or PictoChart or Canva, today I just want to talk about Visme. So Visme has all kinds of templates, but it also has a good interface that you can create your own documentation. 
and you can make it colorful, you can make it interactive, or you can make it flat and download it as a PDF to email to your people. So here let's look at just some templates. So you can do presentations. This would be like a slide deck that you can run in Google Slides or PowerPoint or Keynote. And so you can see various different presentation templates. And you can also create an infographic. Infographics tend to be a little bit more with vertical height and the sequence goes from the top to the bottom and it's a way that you can have information and graphs and graphical elements in addition to text. In fact, the text more supplements the graphic components. And so you can have timelines and you can have sequential order to the information. You can also create documents such as projects, reports. In fact, you can look at, I've used this many times for reports in the past. And if I click on one of these, then I can go ahead and preview it. And you can see the different page layout designs. You have tables of contents. You're going to have graphs. You're going to have concluding slides. If I jump onto the next template, then you can see different color schemes and different page layouts. And these are all very pretty, I think. They're very well done. And then you can just take these templates and you can customize it with your own information. In addition to reports, you can create your own magazine, for example. Use it for resumes, cover letters, white papers, media kits. There's also printables. So you can use this to create flyers or posters for your school. You can use it for web graphics, such as a LinkedIn banner or a YouTube thumbnail or something on Instagram. And they have all of the dimensions and they have several templates that you can use. You can even use it to create videos and GIFs. So for fun, let's just check out maybe documents and let's see what kind of magazines they have. And maybe we can create our own EdTech magazine. So here's one at the end. Let's preview this. And it's very colorful, very dynamic. And so I can click use this template. And now I have all of the pages here. I can see the pages to the right, the little thumbnails, and I can change the text. It's all boilerplate text, but I can change all of these elements. I can switch the colors to a different color scheme, for example. If I want that to be blue and you'll notice there when I click that color and I selected blue or whatever color you choose you can replace every instance of that color to the new color if you want and you can save the palette you can create more palettes and the palette would be the color scheme the certain set of colors that you want to be thematic throughout your interaction so I have layouts. Of course, I'm using this collection of layouts. I have basic elements. I can put headers and font. All of these elements that are on here are customizable and I can add other elements if I wanted to. They have all kinds of different stats and figures, things like charts and diagrams. I can create photo grids if I wanted. And there's also graphics. I can put lines and shapes and ornamental elements. There's icons, characters, illustrations. I can upload my own photos if I want, or I can search for the available photos if there's a stock photo that's good. I can even put media or themes. And when I have an interaction that's good, of course I'd want to change the name, and then you can click download. So not all of these options are available with the free version, but I think the free version is good enough. You can download JPEGs and PNGs. They might not be the highest resolution, but they're fine for anything on the web. You don't really need high resolution on the web. High resolution is only good if you are intending to truly print things out and you want to have that integrity in a large printed format. But I could go ahead and save this as a PDF, for example, save certain pages. I'm just going to save all of the pages and then I can click download. And now you can see it downloaded at the bottom there. And now that download is a soft copy that I can have. I can upload it into Canvas, for example, or I can email it to my students, or I can pass it along on Slack or whatever channels. So yeah, Visme is a really interesting and interactive platform for you to create this kind of content. There's another platform I want to introduce you to. In the past, I talked about the TechSmith blog, and the TechSmith blog is great. And this is the Articulate blog. And the thing is that you don't really have to use TechSmith or Articulate products in order to benefit from their community. With Articulate, you can sign up for free. You don't have to buy anything from them. And a lot of their materials are going to be specific to some of their platforms like Storyline, but they also have a lot of really great e-learning resources. And so you can learn all about, if you're new to e-learning, they have e-learning 101 with tips and tricks and blog posts and discussions, all kinds of resources. There's some things you can download. 
They also have the Rapid eLearning blog. And I think Tom Kuhlman has been running this for years and does an excellent job. And you can look at all kinds of different topics, such as visual and graphic design. What are some key components that you want to look up for? And you can see all kinds of really good resources. Five common visual design mistakes. Let's learn about that so we can learn about what not to do when we're creating a PowerPoint presentation or when we're designing a content page in Canvas. How can we be strategic about the visual elements in our course? And so you can learn all kinds of stuff, not just about visual, but you can learn things about PowerPoint, about e-learning. It's all around just a great resource of curated and created content for you. This next one is a really lightweight website, and it's called rightwords.org.uk. And essentially, let's hop back over to this discussion thread in Canvas. And I'm just going to copy all of this content right here, and we're going to hop over to this website and paste it right there. So the entire content of that discussion thread is there and I can find what are the frequencies that I use certain words. Now this is all just boilerplate text. It doesn't have any semantic meaning at all. But let's go ahead just for fun and I'm going to submit that. And I can learn right now that my number one word is cardigan, which I used seven times on that page. And I also like the word Portland and Nutra and turmeric and Helvetica. Down the list of it, I can see microdosing and vinyl typewriter tattoos. And so it's just a way that you can quickly paint a picture of your lexicon. What kind of words do you rely heavily on? And there's also a phrase frequency counter, which for my example isn't going to mean much because honestly, this is just content that I got from hipsterypsum.com. And so if I submit this, I'm going to look at two words back to back. So two words in sequence, and I'm going to submit that. I could look at maybe a string of four words, or do I have a string of three or five words? Are there certain phrases that I use more than others? And it looks like there are. It looks like hot chicken apparently is my number one. And then I got fanny pack and blue bottle. And down the list, we have man braid and food truck. Again, it's just random. It's all just hipster stuff, but it could be insightful if you want to see your common phrases and get to know a little bit about your, you know, your writing style. This last website I want to share with you is called Scoop It. And if you haven't heard of that, it's great. I've actually been using this since grad school, so probably about 15 years or so. And it's a way that the website goes on the internet, goes on your social media, goes on the web, and it looks at your interests professionally or hobby-wise, and then it curates the content and delivers it to you. And so I get emails every day from scoop.it, it's from Scoop It, and I subscribe to a channel called eLearning and Blended Learning in Higher Education. And so I can see all kinds of tags here. Much of this content is material that I wouldn't have come across on my own. Maybe it wasn't on my regular channels. And so it's just really interesting that I can discover that content. And again, I get emails regularly and they'll showcase an article. And a lot of times I bookmark that article. Sometimes I don't read it and oftentimes I do. So it's just a good way for you to authentically keep tabs of the industry or your hobbies, whatever you're interested in. And that was six amazing resources, but I want to share a seventh with you, a bonus, and that's howtocanvas.com. And that's my website. This website has no ads, I pay for it myself, and it's just me. I want to contribute to the industry. I want to contribute to educators and provide them resources and let them know what I'm learning about Canvas. And so I share all kinds of tips and tricks, a lot of HTML and CSS things, or just interesting ideas for laying out your pages. I also talk about topics such as PowerPoint and Canvas Studio, principles of accessibilities, if you're new to Canvas and you want some tutorials, I have a getting started guide. And this is a good resource where if you want to learn how to create an announcement, then I have a guide that will help you, an interactive tutorial, an interactive tutorial. And so I can start this. I'm going to go ahead and mute it, but there's voiceover and there's written instructions. And so it'll actually walk you through the process of creating an announcement in this case. And so here I can have the announcement and I can go and click, click on the blue button. I put the title. And then if I scroll down, I have all of these uh, all of these steps written out with screenshots as well. So if you want to see visually how to do something, then you have that option. If you want to get hands on, then you can follow along with this tutorial and I can blow this up to full screen, for example, and then you can just follow along uploading images, for example, getting into the computer image and adjusting the images. So again, let's back out and head over to getting started. I'm still putting these tutorials together, but I've got a handful of them for you. And so feel free to bookmark this also and hand it off to your faculty. If you have new faculty that are onboarding 
or even students. If you want students to be able to manage their Canvas account settings, then you can send them this link. And again, my main page is my Canvas tutorials where I have blog posts that are associated with the videos that I do. So if you want to learn about dynamic images in Canvas, which I talked about last week, or hidden Canvas tips, or how to customize the color of your background on a Canvas page, then you can click on any one of these and you'll see my write-up and my video. This is also where I put my code because on YouTube I can't put code in the description. YouTube doesn't like that, so I just put it on my blog post and then you can go ahead and copy this and put it into your own sandbox or your own Canvas course. So again, thanks for joining me today. And as always, please hit that subscribe button. I wanna make sure that my content gets out to you. If you have suggestions for how I can keep this content relevant to you, then make sure to participate in the comments below. You're also welcome to subscribe to the social media. Look me up on LinkedIn, Sean Newfer. Google Sean Newfer on LinkedIn. So I hope these resources are helpful for you. If you have other resources that you'd like me to consider for future videos, let me know. And until next time. Happy Digi Nanonin!